Hey, welcome to this new series from Web TV, Power Play. With me on this very interesting program is an analyst, a very incisive one, Kelvin Emmanuel. Great to have you. Thanks for having me again. Today we'll be looking at the recent rating by Forbes. Forbes is a magazine that rates powerful people in the world. And they rated President Vladimir Putin of Russia as the most powerful man in the world, ahead of President Barack Obama of US. That is very, very interesting and surprising. And we'll be discussing why that happened. Stay tuned. It's a very interesting play. And um, considering that the uh, Russian leader is not very popular in the West, it, uh, it raised a lot of eyebrows. But you need to realize that um, these ratings are based on events over a period of time. Look at the decision by the Nobel Committee to award the, um, the, um, the, the organization for the prohibition of chemical weapons. Ahead of Malala. Uh, ahead of um, uh, Malala, the yes. Pakistani girl that was shot in the head. Yes. Look at the fact that the one most critical issue in the world now for global peace is the ban and the eradication of chemical weapons. When you consider the fact that the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons has been working for years yes. in, the, in the Middle East to eradicate and totally take out all chemical weapons in the world. And um, you look at the fact that Mr. Putin and his, prime, um, his Foreign Minister Lavrov were Second. very instrumental yeah. to the deal that yes. the West, the UK, France and the US signed with Syria yeah. to declare all their stockpiles yes. and to destroy their stockpiles yes, and to destroy the plants that produce these chemical weapons, syringas, mustard. Yes. Um, you, you have to give it to Putin. Now, you know, I, in some quarters I've heard people say that um, um, Obama failed. And I choose to disagree because I felt it was the smartest diplomatic decision or move that President Obama has ever had in his presidency so far until now, in his five years plus of presidency. Best diplomatic yes, move. it was the best diplomatic move because you have a president that came on one office on the premise that I don't want to go to war. I don't want to expose young Americans on the field in foreign yes. countries. I don't want to increase the DOD's budget, the Department of Defense budget. They've cut down the DOD's budget from about a trillion dollars down to $600 billion, and now down to $300 billion. You have a president who says, let's use more of um, covert operations, let's use more of diplomacy to resolve issues with other countries than military, military aggression, right? So it's, it's ironical to think that Obama will be one person that wants to go to war. He never really wanted to go to war. The, the, the threat of force on Syria was only a smoke screen the president put to force Syria's hand to the table, to force them to join the UN protocol of the ban and eradication of chemical weapons. People don't understand this, right? So I heard in some quarters that they say, President Putin rescued Obama. I will choose to agree. I will choose to disagree with that. I, I believe it's otherwise. I believe President Obama put Putin on the global map again. Put him on the edge. Yes, because when you look at the press conference that um, um, no, the press conference that John Kerry had in London with William Hague, the yeah. um, foreign minister of the, of the UK, yeah, where at the last ditch, a journalist ha asked the question and said, what does Syria need to do right now to avert a potential military strike by the US and possibly NATO, if NATO has to come in, yes. right? What does Syria need to do? And um, John Kerry, uh, a lot of people have said in some quarters too that that question was a choreographed move by the U.S. State Department, right? <laughs> yeah. Because surprisingly, Putin now had to offer that they will engage Syria to now open up uh, to the OPCW. Well, when, when you look at Russia, you, you, Russia right now politically in this situation is, um, is like, is trying to come on the spotlight again. Russia, Russia is just so, so so I wouldn't use the word desperate. Desperate will be a very aggressive word. I'll use the word eager. Russia is just so eager to be prominent in the diplomatic space. So Russia was eager to take advantage of the fact that um, they have a, a strong uh, military um, tie, diplomatic tie with um, um, Syria. They supply Syria weapons. And it took advantage of that to negotiate 
with Bashar al-Assad to give up his chemical weapons because he felt that that was the only way out of the situation, right? But unbeknownst to them that President Obama never wanted military action. How do you have a president who was elected on the premise that I'm going to cut down the defense budget, which he has, I'm going to revenge um, um, terrorist attacks, which he has to a great extent, yes. I'm going to um, bring back our troops back from Afghanistan, from Iraq, which he has done to the most extent, I'm going to see that we use more of covert operations, the naval seals, drones, we use more of diplomacy to re resolve our issues with other countries and regions, which he's doing right now. And then, all of a sudden, you have him come and say, we're going to fight Syria. Even when it was very apparent that it was a very risky operation that we were going to go into. Because he was proposing that they don't have any boot on the ground. But, you know, immediately you, you, you violate a country's sovereignty by striking them militarily. Then you have to be open for the consequences. There, there, there is no, no, no guarantee that if the, the U.S. sent fighter jets to strike Syria, that there were not going to be a response by Syria and its allies. There was no guarantee. So America would have as a plan B, plan C, plan D, planned out that in case this comes to this, this is what we're going to do. It came to come to a point of no return, then we have to go on the ground, right? So it's ironical for people to believe that President Obama failed um, in, 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 um, in, the, in the whole situation. It's ironical, and I don't believe it. I choose to believe that the threat of force was just a small screen that the U.S. did, and it was a well-choreographed move like I've never seen in a very long time by any government.